Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we do thank you tonight. We are grateful that you count us worthy to serve you and to give other people the knowledge of the Almighty so that they can be brought out of their sins and brought to the Savior and so that the church, the body of Christ, can be edified. We pray, Lord, our ministry will not be in vain in Jesus' name. We pray that as you teach us how to be our best in ministry, all these things will sink deep into our hearts, will apply them to our lives, and will render acceptable service unto you. Speak to every heart tonight again. In Jesus' name we pray. For some weeks after the workers retreat, we've been emphasizing love as the necessary ingredient that we ought to have in serving the Lord, working for the Lord. You remember in the last three Tuesdays, how we have emphasized this love. And that's what we're still going to do today. I'm now in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians 13. I back up to the last verse of the previous chapter. But covet honestly the best gifts, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. The Corinthians were very eager to serve the Lord. And they knew about the spiritual gifts. And obviously they had natural gifts too. And they were interested in making use of those natural and supernatural gifts. All to edify, build up the body of Christ. But... And they got into a rut. They got into a serious mistake. And that is, they felt the manifestation, demonstration of those gifts will be enough by themselves. And so they got into all kinds of competition, all kinds of carnality. And then their service was not being acceptable in the sight of the Lord. And Paul the Apostle from chapter 1 had led them through many, many things they needed to know. And now he wants to come to this beautiful chapter, verse, chapter 13. And he says, come on now, I need to show you a more excellent way. I told you in the message on the excellent way of love, that the excellent way to please the Lord is the way of love. The excellent way to raise a family is the excellent way of love. The excellent way of raising your children is the excellent way of love. The excellent way of building the church, edifying the church, making the church what the church ought to be is the way of love. I told you at that time, if you remember, that the excellent way to reward your friends, your friends who have treated you well, the way to respond to them is the way of love. And the way to treat your enemies is the way of love. Think about it. Anything you want to do for yourself, for others, for your family, for the church, the only way is that way of love. After he had said that, he then comes on to chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, that means love, I am become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And then he says, Though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And do I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, love, agape, the divine kind of love. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burnt and have not this love, agape, charity, profited me nothing. You'll find what the Paul the Apostle was talking about. Number one, you find in these few verses I read to you, he makes use of the word I, the personal pronoun, quite a lot of times. The question is, why did he do that? Obviously, Paul the Apostle, knowing the importance of love, at love, this agape, this divine love, with the concept of sacrifice, he had it. Why then did he personalize it? To talk about himself, though I have this and have not love, 
though I do this and have not love, though I act this way and have not love, though I possess this and have not love, I'm nothing. Well, he did that. Look at chapter 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. And these things, brethren, have I in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no man, no one of you be puffed up for one against another. It says, I've transferred everything to myself. Because if you look at Paul the Apostle, all these things that said, though I do this, though I have this, though I possess this, he had them. Was a teacher, was an evangelist, was a missionary, he was a pastor, and he was an apostle, as well as a prophet. And he had all these gifts of the Spirit. And he said, these gifts of the Spirit do not qualify me to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. If there is anything that qualifies me to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, it is this love. And then he says, I've transferred the language to myself. I've used personal pronouns so that you will learn. That there is no other man that should be exalted above the declaration of scripture. And he's telling us that as we look at ourselves individually, look at our ministries individually, we want to understand that whatever gifts we have, whatever skills we manifest, and whatever ability we may possess, and whatever level of position in ministry we have, if there is no love, everything is nothing. Actually, you will see as I come back to 1 Corinthians 13. As you look at this, he mentions seven things that a person may have. And if he doesn't have love, all these seven things, they mean nothing. Number one, speaking or the tongues of men and of angels. It says, if I were to possess the ability to speak supernaturally in the language of every tribe, in the, average, in the language of every nation, and then go beyond that and speak in the language of angels, if there is no love, nothing. Number two, he speaks of the gift of prophecy. And could you understand the details of eschatology and the study of the last things? If there is no love, nothing. Then number three speaks of understanding all mysteries, hidden things, secret things of the kingdom. The things that theologians do not understand. You are able to read in between the lines. You are able to dig very deep and you understand the deep things of the kingdom of God. With that understanding, if there is no love, it means it's still zero. Number four, it talks of possessing all knowledge. It said, were I to have all knowledge about all subjects in the past in the present in the future and i do not have love it says it still amounts to nothing number five it says should in case i'm able to exercise great mountain moving faith that i command that mountain it moves i command that psychometry it goes i command that sickness it moves away if there if there is no love nothing then he tells us in number six, suppose I have unlimited generosity, that I give all my goods to feed the poor, and yet I have not love. If that were possible, uh, to do dish out, give out, bit by bit, everything I have until nothing is left, and there is no love, then it says, I'm still nothing. Profits mean nothing. Number seven, ability to endure suffering, persecution, until it gets to martyrdom. That I'm even killed because of the faith. And if there is no love in it, behind it, it says, prophets mean nothing. Those seven things, it tells us, you know the Bible, you understand, seven is symbolic. And seven represents completeness. And if I have everything there is to have if i do everything there is to be done if i go to all the places there is to go if i preach everything there is to preach 
and I do not have love, it profits me not. In fact, if you look at those verses, you'll see the way you see the word all. Turn back to your Bible in verse 2. Understanding all mysteries. In that same verse 2, all knowledge. In that same verse 2, all faith. In that same verse 3, all my goods to feed the poor. He uses the word all. And the very fact that he mentions seven, nothing is accidental in the scriptures. He's talking about everything that is available that you may have. And if you have everything and yet there is no love, the loveless person produces nothing of eternal value. The loveless person is of himself, of no value in the sight of God. The loveless person receives nothing of eternal value from the Lord. And that's the reason why as we consider our ministry, you are leading us fellowship, you are leading a zone, you are in the marriage committee, or you are in the missions committee in your district, or you are a coordinator, or you are a group coordinator, or you are a pastor, or you are an overseer, whatever we are. Great, great talents will manifest. And thank God for talents. Without those talents, we'll not be able to raise a church like this. God has chosen you. You are doing a great work. But in the process of doing that great work, our love may leak out while the talents and the skills and the abilities and the ministries remain. And to avoid the danger of our love leaking out and only the gifts and the power and the manifestations remaining and we still keep the ball rolling we still get the work going and souls are still being saved and the sick still being healed faith still being manifested a lot of things being done and yet the love has leaked out uh, you know my brothers and sisters if somebody is really really sick and he wants to get healed if you have the gift of healing and the gift of faith you may not have much love. You may insult them, bully on them, shout on them. If they want healing real, real bad, they'll come for the healing. And they say, it doesn't matter. I'll take a few knocks. I'll take a few, a few abuses and a few insults. I know he has a gift. I know he's going to maybe even slap me, but I'm going to get healed anyway. They'll still come. If you are, if you are very, uh, you know, effective in talking, and people just like to hear you, although they may see that there is no love there, they say, "Well, that other fellow has love, but he's not effective." When he reads the Bible, I don't gain anything. But this fellow, he can interpret this scene and turn you on. Just open it up to. He can dig into the mysteries of the kingdom. They will come. So, my brothers and sisters. Don't make the mistake that because the people keep coming, because the crowd is getting larger, and because the sick are being healed, and because you're still giving out knowledge when you teach, don't make the mistake that then that means that your ministry is totally acceptable in the sight of God. It will take love, mixing up with everything you do. Everything you say, every place you go, every act you render to make your ministry acceptable in the sight of the Lord. That's why I'm talking to you today on the priority of love in ministerial service. The priority of love in ministerial service. There are three points we're going to look at in the passage I just read to you. Number one, supernatural speech without love. Possible possible supernatural speech without love number two spectacular signs without love spectacular signs without love number three sharing and suffering without love sharing and suffering without love number one spectacular uh, uh, supernatural speech without love in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 though i paul the apostle though i who has gone to the third heavens and have come back though i 
saved on the way to Damascus directly because of the impartation and the communication of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, this man, he wasn't preached to by a man, mortal man, before he got saved. Special privilege, special position that he had. Though I, who have gone on missionary journey and have come back, though I, after writing half of the New Testament, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I do not have charity love, and become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Now, to speak with the tongues of men and of angels, please, my brothers and sisters, look up here. That will almost make that man to be equal to the angels because it's the angels that are normally saying to us one they speak among themselves how do we know yes they do because isaiah said i had them around the throne and they're saying holy 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 so they communicate with one another and they communicate with god and god sends them and god speaks to them in their own language they understand there's a language of angels but when those angels come to us they spoke to abraham in abraham's language they spoke to lord in lord's language and they spoke to balaam in balaam's language and those angels they spoke to samson's uh, parents in their language and then when they needed to speak to zechariah they spoke to zechariah in his language here is cornelius today in acts chapter 10 the angels spoke to cornelius in cornelius language when they spoke to peter and to paul they spoke to them in their language those angels spoke in the languages of men and when they get back to heaven they speak in the language of angels and then paul the apostle said though i have the understanding to be able to speak to all tribes and all nations in their language and i just be like angel anywhere the lord sends me i don't have to go to the classroom and learn their language i just speak and they understand and then when i'm in a revelation i can speak in the language of the angels even if i could do that and i do not have love it says i'm like sounding brass and tinkling cymbal lifeless thing like lifeless instruments they use in the shrine in the place of idols uh, what was he talking like that come on to chapter one of first corinthians first corinthians chapter one verse five that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge he said hey, there's something i know about your corinthians utterance speaking proclamation declaration you are not behind you can talk and you have the natural gift as well as the supernatural gift in verse 7 so that he come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our lord jesus christ but in verse 11 for it has been declared unto me of you my brethren by them which are the house of chloe that there are contentions among you you can speak you can talk you're dynamic and you appear effective when you talk but contention division there is no love and that's the thing we need to take care of and especially those of us who are preaching uh, you know preaching is is a wonderful thing and it's a great privilege and i don't want you to play with that privilege the lord has called you to be a preacher you are a coordinator you are a pastor you're an evangelist you're a soul winner you are giving out the word of god great great ministry don't give it up keep on doing it but please understand preaching minus love is nothing you're not going to have any reward from god God is not going to set any value on you if there is no love in all the ministry that we occupy. Do you know it's possible to preach sound doctrine and do it without love? Do you know it's possible to preach to sinners to be saved without the love God expects in our hearts? Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. He said, Some indeed preach Christ. If you stopped there, you'll think that's great. Some indeed preach Christ. And that's what the Lord wants us to do preach Christ, preach Him as the Savior of the world, 
Preach him as the one that is full of grace and full of truth. Preach him as the one that is a mediator between God and man. Preach him as the one that has given his life a ransom for the whole world. Preach him. Christ, there is nothing else to preach. We preach Christ crucified. But he said, some indeed preach Christ of envy and of strife. You see that? That's possible. That's possible. Here you are in a district, and then there's a neighboring district. They are preaching, and uh, you know, God is blessing that district. And one of your people came to tell you, Oh, we praise God for our neighboring district here. They're doing great, great things. The Lord is walking through them. And you didn't have any intention, you know, to do anything just because of that other district now, and because of the glory of God that is going through that district, and because of the many, many things happening there. You come, you make an announcement, you are not ready for this. Then you say, We're going to have a, you know, something this time, we're going to have this. You don't have the gift, you don't have the love, you don't have the sacrifice. You don't have the prayer. You are not ready. But because the neighboring district is doing it, so that they will know it's not only that district. What does that coordinator have that I don't have? What can he do that I cannot do? Then you raise up a program. And if you hear that that other district, this is what they are preaching, you first of all, because some of your people, you know, they're saying, ah, praise God for that coordinator, even though it's not a group coordinator, it's one of the newest coordinators, but I'm telling you, God is working in that district. Then you come on here in your district, and you first of all wash down the other coordinator. And you first of all, you know, say, what are they doing there? And some of you, you say that you hear that, and it's the same deeper life. It's the same church. It's the same group. And then you first of all throw some stones in their church. And want to scatter them before you say your own. And then you come on now. You have the experience. You have the verses. And then you begin to preach. Although you preach Christ, you know your heart. Envy. Jealousy. Strive. But it says some of goodwill. Other people are preaching, but it's of goodwill. So it's not just the preaching. What's inside that preaching? <laughs> you know something? It's, it happens amidst us here. Here you have the campus. Here you have the DLSO, the youth. And uh, the, the young people, you know, some of these young people, and you need to understand, they just came out of secondary school. They're now on the campus. And I'm telling you, they still remember. Uh, some of them are members of their youth choir. And some of them, uh, the way they mother them and father them, the way they nurse them, the way they cherish them, uh, the way they carry them, the way they encourage them, uh, they still have attachment to the, to the DLSO, to the young people. And they are there on the campus, and there you are, you come, campus leader. Uh, uh, you are effective, and uh, you can talk. Uh, you can talk to the point, you can sway anybody's mind. And then you talk, you talk, you talk until we begin to fear you, my brother, more than we fear God. And although you are preaching, and although you quote the Bible, and although everything is sound doctrine, and although everything you are saying, impeccable. You cannot contradict it. Everything is truthful. But you are doing it because you are angry. You are unhappy. Because these young people, they have left secondary school, they are now on the campus, and they are not, you know, giving you the attention and the presence they ought to give, and you fire them. You may win them because of fear. You may keep them there because of fear. But you've not done anything for God, after all. See, look up here. Here we have 100. Here we have 200. The pastor here, pastoring 100, he didn't go out to evangelize outsiders. 
he went and he talked to some people of these 200 and with force fear coercion authority he stole 30 out of the 200 here they cross over here this one becomes how many again 130 this one becomes how many okay what's the addition the same thing 300 kingdom of god has not gained anything <laughs> you if you want if you want to evangelize go to the people that have not heard the campus is so large and the unbelievers on the campus there are so many if you really want to help the kingdom of god pray for these young people who are still attached to their youth group instead of you know fighting about it and striking everybody and then when you are doing it in love and you're witnessing to the people that have not known the lord if the 200 people remain there good luck to them their leader is leading them and they will get to heaven is it not heaven we're looking for and that's why paul the apostle said why are these people preaching what's their purpose he said some indeed preach christ it's of envy it's of strive you know is it that you know a church is here and we have you know helped you and you know the truth lagos has about eight million and those of us the adult membership of deeper life we are less than a hundred thousand in lagos we have more than seven million nine hundred thousand others that somebody can preach to you how is it that somebody will come and put a signboard in front of me here my brother what's the signboard for you have multitudes of sinners out there if you are not fighting if it is not strife remove your signboard the few people here let's take care of after all if you steal a hundred people from here 150 from here 300 from here and you join them there the addition in the kingdom of god is still the same you are playing games you have not done anything that's what we need to realize go to the people that have not known christ the people that have not heard and then when you preach preach christ straight don't make trouble with other preachers because if we have the gift the ability to talk and the ability to preach and the ability to declare if there is no love oh yes people may get healed people may roll on the ground people may sing people may shout people may speak in tongues you may drive mountains of demons away but the heart love look at verse 16 it says over there in verse 16 the one preached christ of contention preach christ of contention you know sometimes you don't understand and you wonder why would you preach christ of contention i mean coming to the pulpit here or there anywhere and there's contention in the heart why would you do that if you're serving christ if it's for the glory of god and while you're still here as a coordinator if we said anything in the central church which didn't go down well with you why will you go to your district and while you are preaching to your few people there then you throw stones at us at the central church opposing us is that part of the gospel part of the preaching and if you heard any rumor any gossip about anybody here in the central church then in your district on the pulpit you are broadcasting the rumor the gossip which you have not confirmed what's the purpose of that is that to win souls or is that preaching christ of contention and that's what it's saying do i speak 
in the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity it says i'm like tinkling uh, sounding brass tinkling cymbal it says the one preached the christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds i'm surprised sometimes how some people plan what they call christian program and christian you know a christian campaign evangelism and they know that okay a deeper life is there let me go and shake them a little rustle the next nest a little and then you come to do something very near there you know that when you do that you make you make a lot of people uneasy it, that's not right that's not right they don't preach cries of contention there's a lot to do think of this whole africa the whole even nigeria alone think of the cities in nigeria think of the villages in nigeria think of the sinners roaming about that never stepped into this our church here and if somebody wants to preach the sinners are there reach out to them they don't come inside here and be distributing things wanting people to go away why do you want them to go away is it because you don't believe that we're teaching them salvation here that you want them to go and hear about real salvation in another place be sincere is it because you believe that we don't preach holiness without no man shall say the Lord. Without which no man shall say the Lord. That you are doing that backhanded distribution of handbills. To get them out there. If you want to help anybody. You shouldn't take out. This is stealing now. You shouldn't steal. The people we have labored on. We have sweated. We have gone through pain. We have done a lot. To help them understand the gospel. If God is calling you or calling anybody, that's all right. Then you reach out to the people, raw, raw sinners there. That's what we did. We got the raw sinners. We got the drunkards. We got the drug addicts. We got the womanizers. And we got them in here. And we caught them from the sea. The fish. Then we brought them into the boat and we started teaching them Bible study, revival, our, everything that we needed to do. <laughs> Go and do that if you want to preach. Very dangerous for any of us to begin to bite the fingers that feed us and think that we are manifesting gift. Though you speak, I'm going to tell you now, of the tongues of men and of angels, and I'm not love. Oh, love. You'll not want to hurt me if you love me. I will not want to hurt you if I love you. Though you speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And I'm not love. It means that you have become a sounding brass. And a tinkling cymbal. There are things when you love, you will never do. There are things, if you love, you'll never think about. If I do that, it will hurt my pastor. If I do that, it will hurt my brother. If I do that, it will hurt my church where I have been for more than 15 years, 20 years. And that church labored on me. And that church gave me the platform to preach. And that church raised me up and publicized me. That church has done a lot for me. If you are grateful, there's something you'll never do in the church that has helped you to a point like this. So then, you need to understand, the Lord is saying, if you want to preach, good. Don't let it be of contention, of strife, of envy tearing the church of the living god apart romans chapter 15 romans 15 verse 20 so ye so have i strived to preach the gospel not where christ was named lest i should build upon another man's foundation so to preach Paul said, I don't want to make trouble for Peter. 
I don't want to make trouble for any other person. So I strive to preach the gospel. Not where Christ has been named, but where he has not been known. Why do I do that? So that I will not build on another man's foundation. If you desire, or if anybody out there, any preacher out there, if he desires that this church should crumble so that he will build on the rubbles of this church, that's not love. That one doesn't have any reward. And that's the reason you need to examine your own heart. You want to examine your own reason for doing what you want to do and what you plan to do. Number two, spectacular signs without love. I come to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Here Paul the Apostle went forth. He said, you know what? Spiritual gifts, gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, the mysteries of the kingdom, knowledge, faith, that removes mountains, solves problems. If I had all of them, and I do not have this love that sacrifices not the kind of thing that feeds on the sacrifices of the others love that sacrifices if i do not have that it says i am nothing of course the media can you know lift up a person you know in fact the media will do that if a person operates in the gifts of prophecy and he understands all mysteries and those media people get to that meeting and they see the depths of knowledge and the manifestation of the gift of faith removing mountains they're going to exalt that man they just overlook the lack of love but god says you'll be nothing if there's no love there and that's possible you remember Balaam? Come to Numbers. Numbers chapter 24. In verse 15. And he took up his parable. And said, Balaam, the son of Baal, has said, the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, Falling into a trance and yet but having his eyes open. This man was something. I, I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob. And his scepter shall rise out of Israel. And shall smite the corners of Moab. And destroy all the children of Seth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession of his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. He was prophesying about the coming Christ. But do you know, with all that prophecy, chapter 25, verse 1, Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit wardom, while it were the daughters of Moab. They called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Balpeer, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Who did this? Is a visionary. Who did this is the one who had the gift of prophecy and the one who fell into trance and this same Balaam who saw the vision of the Almighty come and look at it in uh, Numbers chapter 31 verse 16 behold these cost the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor 
And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Do you see that? The vision was there. No love. He counseled Barak that he'll put stumbling block before the children of Israel so they will fall. Are there people that do that? That use their gifts to make the children of God fall? Or to destroy the work of God that other ministers of God have labored on for years? That's not love. And if you have the gift of prophecy, and you understand all mysteries, and you have all knowledge, and you have the faith to move mountains, and this love is not there, you'll be surprised on the final day. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work, what? Iniquity. Uh, that's the reason why we need to be careful in ministry. And whenever we minister, we check up your purpose, check up your intention, check up what's in your heart. Is it pride? Is it strife? Is it contention? Is it self will? Check it up. Because, my brother, my sister, winning souls into the kingdom, healing their bodies, delivering the oppressed. If self will is there inside, ulterior motive, private agenda is there. If hatred, bitterness against the person that God used to make you know the way of salvation look up here whatever the weakness or the shortcoming of your father and your mother your father and your mother are responsible for bringing you into this world whatever you see here eh, they didn't do this well they didn't do this pray for us didn't I tell you last week? Aaron and all lifting up the hand of Moses so that Joshua on the battlefield can defeat the Amalekites. I told you, were you here? Tell me out loud. Yes. Instead of criticizing Moses that the hand of Moses got heavy and went down, Take a stone, put it there, sit down there, lift up the hand of Moses so that the hand will be up permanently. He don't criticize. His hands might be heavy, but that man, God used his stammering tongue to bring these people out of the land of Egypt. What will those people have known? Without Moses writing that Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. What water would they have drunk without the rod of that Tamara striking the rock, bringing out water for them? How would they have eaten manna? Don't forget, you've been here for 5, 10, 20 years. God has used this little clay to show you the way of the Lord. And Apollos may come. A Paul may come. Anybody may come speaking in the language of men and angels. Don't bite these little fingers that fed you. Stay there. If I've been feeding you for 15 years, 20 years, and you are this developed, that by the grace of God now you know the scriptures, give me a chance. The next five years, if Jesus tarries, I will keep on feeding you. And if you have been blessed up to this level for these years, you will get more. Uh -uh, see, all these few years, God helped us. We planted more than 5,000 churches in Nigeria. We sent missionaries to all these countries in Africa. 
and they are preaching the word and people are getting saved and you and god needs you and when it's to come to your turn to go and do what we are preparing you to do just before you come for your final exam and interview then you bolt out and you go and start in primary one again then you make my labor to be wasted and lost it will not be so and so jesus christ himself said that many many people will come to him in the final day and they will say have we not done this have we not done that then he will say and profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity and that, that means then on the final day the lord is not going to look at only at the external things at the ministerial service at the activities he's going to look at what's beneath it and behind it he's going to look at the love that was there the love was there if the love was not there everything will be burnt with fire come to the last point sharing and suffering without love in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 3 and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burnt and have not charity profited me nothing here we come to another thing they are generous people generous people but you know that giving out money we we know our country here they are generous philanthropic people but they have their private agenda you know sometimes brothers and sisters give me a chance look up here sometimes a politician he will not declare that he wants to be the governor of the state he will not declare that he wants to be the president of the nation but you know for about three four years if they are building mosque there he'll give thousands of naira if they are building church there he'll give thousands of naira if they are building school there he'll give thousands of naira if they are building hospital there he'll give thousands of naira if they are having any project water project there he'll give thousands of naira if the a village does not have electricity he'll give thousands of naira and people will not know that he's giving that money because of the time when the campaign will start and the parties will raise up their voice and they'll be asking people to vote but he is like ev and everybody is mentioning his name he might have his rice in the market he might have his t-shirt in the market he might have this and just giving out things to people giving out things to people and it is when now the polls come and the parties are raised up that our man comes and he begins to declare he wants to be the governor of the state or he wants to be the the president of the nation then those of us who can think will begin to uh -huh, okay no wonder he's neither muslim nor christian if they are building mosque he puts money there if they are building church he puts he's neither evangelical nor pentecostal if celestial is building church he puts money there if a uh, deeper life is building church he wants to put money there hey, no wonder his mind is a friend to everybody never upsets anybody not knowing that it is politics it has, it's possible to give money it's possible to distribute things and yet on the final day the lord will say yes you gave but you see the ulterior motive you see the private agenda though i give all my goods to feed the poor and i'm not charity it profits me nothing it's a pity for this man i'm going to read about great good man in acts of the apostles chapter 4 verse 36 and joseph who by the apostles was named barnabas which being interpreted the son of consolation a levite a levite of the country of cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet great barnabas but he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Is the love there, Barnabas? You gave everything, 
Or is your love leaking out? Acts chapter 15, verse 36, 35. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let's go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the world. And the contention was so sharp. Where is the love? I thought, well, I thought the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul. Mark was not there. Why do we allow things and people that the Holy Ghost has not identified? Why do we allow them to separate us? Agenda, program, ministries, people that the Holy Ghost has not mentioned. Why do we allow that to take us away from the place where God planted us? Have we forgotten? This is chapter 15. Barnabas, what's the problem with you? It's just chapter 13 here in the corner where the Holy Ghost spoke and joined you and Paul together. What happened to you? Why contention? Why argument? John Mark will not go. That's all right. Holy Ghost did not mention him before. I didn't know I didn't know about that. When they laid hands on us and sent us away, in fact, they didn't even lay hands on John, John Mark. What's the problem? And the contention was so sharp between them. And then it says, and they departed asunder. I pray that what God has joined together, no man will put asunder. You know, brothers and sisters, eh, the little, little things that separate us, that make us angry with one another, and that takes us away from the ministry where God has given us. Eh, eh, the group coordinator, see what he said about me. Is that what's going to separate you? The pastor, eh, the last time, eh, you know, during the workers' retreat, he said something I didn't like. That's something. It's going to take you away from the place where the Holy Ghost has planted you. I don't like the place they put me. Uh, they, you know, I'm supposed to be in this district. They transferred me to this district. Uh, that's enough to separate you. They cheated me. Uh, they, uh, they, when they looked at my case, they said I was guilty when I was not guilty. Well, bear that. Bear that. Uh, that's going to separate you from what the ministry God has placed you in. Why? And then they went asunder one from the other. So that Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. He went back to his hometown. It became a tribal kind of thing. But Paul chose Silas and he departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. Barnabas. Barnabas, where are you? Why don't you just bury all those contentions and all those things? You know, speaking against this, speaking against that. Where is our love? We need to recover our love. I know your works. I know your patience. And I know your labor. And now thou canst not bear with them that are evil and them that say they are apostles and they are not. And you have tried them and known that they are liars. And you have labored. And you have endured. And you have not fainted. But nevertheless, I have somewhat against you that you have left your first love. Don't think I'm preaching. Just, just let's accept one another. And look inward. How much do we love one another now? How much do I love you? How much do you love me? 
Is it not very easy now to offend you? That the preacher has to be very careful. He doesn't say this so you are not offended. When we love one another, we don't count offense. When we love one another, whatever the pastor preacher says, you know he means good. You know he's preparing you for heaven. You know that's his style. That's his way of getting you ready for heaven. Even let the righteous smite me. It will be ointment upon my head when we love one another. Where is the love? I pray God will increase our love so that our labor will not be in vain. I've spoken to you tonight as a father, having children, loving his children, and not wanting his children to go out and go astray because the life of the father is in the future of the children. That's the reason I spoke to you this way. Don't be offended. I love you and the Lord wants you to love everyone and love the work of God. He's committed something to your hand. Stay at your post. Stay at your post. Do the work the Lord has given you to do. We will meet in heaven. And God will reward you in heaven. Uh, you know, of recent we've had in, you know, in Lagos here, uh, you know, some people, uh, so they are not happy with this they are not happy with that uh, don't pick faults don't pick uh, you know this one this one this one if we are wrong pr let's pray with one another two wrongs will not make a right and there's nothing wrong we have done all we're doing is let's stand on this word we will stand i said we will stand and if there's any Barnabas there wanting to pick John Mark and bolt away and run away, don't run away. The Holy Ghost puts you here. And the Holy Ghost has not said anything different. Stay where the Holy Ghost has put you. And if your difficulty, if you have difficulty in your post of duty, God will increase his grace upon your life. Let's hold our hands together. I don't mean literally. Let's hold our hands together. March on. We're going to conquer this land. Rise up and let us pray. Everything we do must have love in it. If we're going to be rewarded. The more gift you have, the more love you should pray that God will give you. So that that gift will be exercised in love. The greater the gift, the greater the love must be. Love in every section of the work. It's love that gives value to our gifts. Without love, all is nothing.